Hi everyone, Danny here for another Seesaw tutorial. Uh, in this tutorial, we're going to be looking at the view that your students are going to see. So we're going to go through how they can sign in. There's a few different ways that they can do that. Uh, we're going to look at uh, the journal. Uh, we're going to do a bit of a tour of how they can use folders, how they can change things, edit items, how they can add to their journal and all the different things that they can do in that as well. So let's dive in and we'll have a look. I should point out as well that for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm using my iPad. So if you're familiar with the iPad app of Seesaw, this is going to be really helpful. But if you're using Android or Chromebook or something different, uh, you'll find they'll be very similar. There might be a few slight differences. So let's dive in. So obviously the first thing you want to do is go to the Seesaw class app. Not the family one, that's for your parents and family members, but the class app. Now from here, obviously you can sign in yourself, uh, but if you're looking to get your students to sign in, you want them to sign in as a, as a student. So like I mentioned, you can get them to sign in a few different ways. The first way is the QR code. I find that quite easy because you can stick the poster of the QR code up in your classroom and then your students just go and log themselves in. I find it really handy in a classroom where, especially when you've got younger children and they tend to log themselves out quite often. So this is just a really easy way to do it. Obviously, you've got your um, Google or email sign-in down the bottom, but as a lot of people right now with remote learning are using, they're using the home learning codes. So what you want to do is have your students put in their home learning code here. So once they're in to Seesaw, um, for the first time they'll be asked if they want to turn their notifications on. I usually tell them not to, but I guess that's a personal preference. And what we see here straight away is our landing page. So our landing page contains our journal, your default on there, uh, it has your profile photo, your name, pretty much it's where you're going to go to start everything off. Uh, from the landing page as well, you've also got your calendar up the top which you can check if there's any any items that you've got due for that day or anything that you've put in that day. But you've also got your activities tab here. So any activities that the teacher has signed will be here. And you've also got the inbox here. So this is where any messages like class announcements or notifications will, will go through. Um, I've got a piece of work here that I demonstrated in another video. And this is usually what your students will see uh, after they've posted some work. Now, students can go in and actually make comments on their work or even, you know, heart it to like it. Um, that's a really good way for teachers to know that their students are actually going back and looking at feedback as well that maybe you've given on some items. But they've got options as well, which I'll quickly show here. Um, this folder icon allows you to alter what, fo what folder uh, your work's been put in. So if, for example, you've been asked to put something in your writing folder, but maybe you've forgotten to do it, but you've already submitted the work, it's really easy to go in here and just select the folder that you want. The beauty here is that you can select multiple folders and you can see that they change here as you select them. So we've got our multiple folders here. You may though find that you didn't quite finish your work or you realize after you posted it that maybe you've done something wrong and you want to fix it and that's where our, our ellipse here comes in handy so when you press up that press that it brings up a whole other new menu you have the option to delete it to edit to edit the people the folders and the date as well to copy it and edit to share or save or print it with the qr code now delete and edit are the two ones that you'll find a lot what is also handy though if you have got multiple people working on one project in Seesaw you can actually add them in here. Now teachers would generally jump in and do that but in this case here we can see you know maybe this work was completed by Ralph and Nelson here so we want to add them in that way their parents can see the work that's been done together and you can see that both their profile photos will show up here. If we want to edit the item so maybe we've put something in the wrong order all you have to do is press edit it quickly prepares it and then it reopens it for you so that you can go back in and change what you need to change. So once you've done that, you can press the tick to go back. Now, I'm just going to show you how you can um, add different items to your Seesaw journal. And this is where all the fun stuff happens. So this is your, your favorite button, your add button. 
Obviously, if your teacher has set you up an activity, it will all be in here and this is where you would start your work. But if it's something else that hasn't been given an activity, this is where you would start your work. So we just want to press add. And then we've got choices. We could take a photo. We can add a drawing. We can add a video. We can add a link, a text note, or we can upload a file either from our device or um, from the cloud. But the ones that you will probably use uh, these three, you'll probably use these more than anything. Now, photo is pretty self-explanatory. You open it up and you take a photo. All right. You can change the view by pressing the camera here and then you can see me just there. Let's take a photo. Okay. From here, we're really lucky. We can go through and we can actually edit it. We can draw all around it. We can change the size of it, which I find is handy and you can see here it's come up unlock to move so that must mean we need to unlock it so to do that we press the ellipse down here and we press unlock and then you'll see the little white circles that actually appear there so we can resize things so we can put that up there there might be a bunch of reasons that you might want to do that but it's an option that's there for you you can add any text note here you want um, and once you've added the text note, you can actually change the style by pressing on it and then pressing the ellipse. So you can change the font, you can change how it looks, you might want to change the color, which you can do over here. All right, so there's lots of things you can play with there. Um, additionally, you can actually um, change uh, the angle of your text or you can just move it into a different place like that. And same with your picture, you can just move it around like that. So I'm just going to press the check for that one. I'm not going to put it into a folder. So with the video, it is pretty self-explanatory as well. You can go in and you can press record and you can add a video. So there's nothing happening here. Um, but I will save the, those few seconds that I did. Now here you can add a caption which you can see there typing just down the bottom. So once you've done that, you can press the check as well. You can actually save it as a draft if you want to so that you can come back to it at a later time. And it's visible just to you and the teacher and your teacher would know that you've just created a draft. Upload is pretty basic. You can upload a photo, which once you've done that, it will bring up the drawing menu. You can add things from iCloud or Dropbox or from Google Drive. If we wanted to add a photo like I've got here, I might just quickly add this one. And the same thing, I get the text, the microphone, the camera, I get all my drawing options as well, which I can play around with. If I want to add multiple where it's got the one one here, I can tap that. I can add another page and I can add another photo if I like, so by uploading there. So I'll just save that. Text note is really basic. Just by pressing on that, you can either record a voice message or you can type it. So you can tap the keyboard to come up, but like I said, I've got my magnetic keyboard here, so I'm just going to type something there. Really basic. Notes are really good for putting in video links if you've got them from YouTube or somewhere else online. And I have been saving the drawing one for last because I find that that's the one that you can do the most with. Uh, I, you pretty much end up on that page through photo or upload or through um, the drawings anyway. So I just press on that. And from here, you can do anything you want. So you can use the different pencils. You can change the color along the side here. You can draw yourself multiple colored pictures. Um, I'm not a very good artist, so, and that's pretty much all I know how to draw is an elephant. But obviously you can add your text. So you can label anything that you draw. And you can change the style like I've already showed you. I do like the comic one, so I might select that one. And let's make it purple. Why not? Now if I don't want to move that, I can actually lock it in place. I can add 
um, some recorded audio, I can add another photo. So let's do that. Let's upload a photo. Let's find our, this is a fun cat Facebook challenge that I did not long ago. Since we're playing with animals, let's just keep it consistent. Now you'll notice here that the cat is actually going over the text of the elephant there. If I don't want that to happen, I can actually press the ellipse under the thing that I want to change the order of. I actually can change the order, so I can change that and move it to the back. So now you can see it's actually behind that label there. So that's a really handy little hint for you. Um, if you don't like it, you can delete it. If you want to copy it, you can just press duplicate and there you go, you've got two of them. Here is where you'll find your shapes and your backgrounds. So there is a lot of backgrounds to choose here. Um, I quite like that one. Um, there is a lot of shapes as well that you can choose here. So um, one thing, I don't know if a lot of teachers actually realize that you've got your MAB frames in here as well. So you've got your, your hundreds, your tens and your ones. So you can use this for lots of maths activities, which is really cool if they're trying to um, explain a concept. All right, so we've got the different tools. Kids seem to love that one, which is really good. And obviously you've got your eraser. Anything that you want to add, you just, again, up here and press add page. Now you can record while you're creating by pressing on the microphone here and it will actually save a recording of what you're doing and what you're talking and it will do that for up to five minutes. So if you've got a concept that you might want your students to be able to explain, uh, this is really perfect for them. So they can go ahead and draw and type and add photos and it will record all of that for you. Um, and once you're done, you just press that done there. And there you go, you've got a video. Um, here is your caption button, so you can add a caption or a voice caption if you need to. So we're not going to do that. So once you've done that, you just press save. Again, you can put it into a folder if you like. So that's really the basic stuff to do with um, Seesaw. If you're a student, this is what you're going to be using. Uh, once all your folders are set up properly, you usually will see them here along the side, or you can just press on the icon here and you can see any folder that you've got an item in there and you know teachers will set up folders for what they want at my school in particular we have folders for reading writing maths um, for inquiry based subjects and our specialists have their own folders as well so they're usually in there as an additional teacher my best advice though is if you're using seesaw with your students for the first time go and give them 10 minutes with no instructions to go and figure things out for themselves. I call that that digital sandbox time. It's that time where they can play. I give them a rule, 10 minutes, and you're not allowed to ask any help because you want them to be able to play and work things out on their own. And they're really quite capable to do that. And chances are you're going to have students that have figured one thing out that another hasn't. And then you create all these expert groups, which really helps down the track when you're really delving into how you're using Seesaw in your class. So I hope this has been really useful for you. Um, if you've got any questions, uh, you can um, leave a comment and I will try to get back to you. Uh, but yeah, happy seesawing everyone.